There she be. Fired up and ready to go. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video here. So we've got a couple of small things that we gotta do here today. First thing we're gonna do is run to the auto zone because I get auto zone rewards and so like pretty much every two or three times I go in there, I can get like basically 20 bucks free, which is almost enough to change the oil like in my grandpa's truck today. So I'm gonna go do that. We're gonna go grab some oil filter. I'm gonna run over here real quick though. Just check all the fluids. Power string fluid look good. I'm gonna check the transmission fluid level. And then I know what oil I gotta get and filter and stuff. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna tinker around on this truck for a little bit. So uh, we're gonna run and grab this stuff real quick and then get on back over here. So we got the old 5.9 gasser here. We're gonna be doing some things to it today. First thing we're gonna be doing is getting the washer fluid topped off because this thing has had a low wash light on i think for as long as i can remember and there's no washer fluid in it so we're gonna get the washer fluid filled back up and then we've got a couple other things we're gonna be doing today as well we also have the ohio deer season starting up in a few days so we're getting prepared for that um, we're gonna be doing some transmission uh flushing and refilling with new fluid oil filter new oil and then there's that uh, rain x for the windshield washer fluid so we're going to be doing all this today and hopefully that can uh be good and get us set for another five to ten thousand miles in terms of at least with filter we should be good for another ten thousand miles and then for the transmission fluid we should be good for fifty to sixty thousand miles and then the um oil of course that's only good for three to five thousand miles i believe is all we should oh we should wait before doing that again this truck was never really um how do i put it my grandpa wasn't big on maintenance and you know the guy that owned this before him was a middle-aged man between the ages of 45 and 55 i believe and he apparently maintained it very meticulously that's what the dealership told us of course they probably tell that to everybody but it does run very very good and they said it came out of texas it was a super clean truck which it really was until it came here and then it sat outside and got driven in the salt the snow and all that stuff and just never got washed off just sat out what does that do causes things to rust luckily the frame's in amazing shape for the most part and there's only a little bit of rust on the body that we need to take care of but other than that it's a structurally sound truck engine runs great transmission shifts spot on uh, for as good as they can get for a factory transmission. So I think we're in pretty good shape still. I think they put about 20 to 25,000 miles in the truck since I bought it for him about four years ago now. So for the most part, even if he wasn't amazing at maintenance, you know, we should still be in pretty good shape as long as it was in amazing shape before that and we get everything changed out now. I think we should be looking good. So let's get this thing pulled in and get to changing some things out. I'm curious though what this oil looks like. Let's get to this. So here's what it looks like under the hood of the old girl here. It's actually, it's actually fairly clean. I just took the oil cap off. It's right here. Um, I checked the trans fluid. It is actually good. It's in the okay line and the fluid's nice and like reddish or whatever it looks like, or like pinkish color. And the engine oil, I did check that and it's pretty dark actually. It's pretty, it's pretty black. I think if you look down in there. It's pretty black. Um, I mean, you know, needs done. I'm not gonna act like I'm surprised. I kind of, I kind of figured it was gonna need done like it hadn't been done in a while. I mean, the oil doesn't look as bad as I thought. I mean, it's dark, obviously. Truck's got, you know, 247,000 miles on it, but it's not. It doesn't look too terribly bad. I gotta get that oil filter off. You gotta love it when an oil filter actually is on the end tight and can come off fairly easy. Well, oil is just about done draining. It's only a little bit dripping out now and the oil filter's off. I'm putting STP, um, high mileage, you know, 10W30 for gasoline. I mean, this this stuff should be fine. I run STP in almost all of my trucks that I do oil changes on. I mean, it seems to be fine. I've never had any issues with it. And I like my, I don't know why, maybe it's just me. Maybe it doesn't make any difference at all. I like my oil filter brand to match my oil brand of what I'm using. So, you know, this is a 10,000 mile, you know, oil filter made for gasoline engines. I like to use the STP high mileage, you know, oil as well, you know, so. I don't know if it makes any difference, but that's what I like to do. Just kind of a preference thing, maybe, but I'm going to get this oil filter filled up and then thrown up in there. So 
So I was gonna actually change the transmission fluid, but I don't even know how to change it. I'm guessing based on what I'm seeing out of there, there's no like drain port like there is for the oil. So it appears that you would actually have to drop the entire transmission pan and um, get the fluid out that way and do a new gasket and put it all back on. So I'm probably not gonna do that today. That wasn't really in the plans. I was hoping there was a plug somewhere like on aftermarket pans where you can just like pull the plug and drain the fluid. But I guess that is not how it's set up and maybe i'm just not seeing it somebody let me know down in the comments below how do you do it on these 1500s i just didn't prepare for that i didn't get a new gasket or anything so i uh, wish if i would have known that i would have done that already this morning and picked one up but uh so we're gonna get the new oil put in here i got the new filter put on and it's a high capacity oil filter compared to the other one the other one was quite a bit more narrow and quite a bit smaller the one that i put on is a lot a lot bigger it threaded right up on the gasket was the exact same size as the other one so where it seats and how it seats is the exact same but the filters are so much bigger but so i mean it is a ten thousand mile high mile filter so uh anyways let's get the oil topped off and get this thing started up So I'm going to be draining this oil in an undisclosed location, but I want to show you guys something. We're going to look at the oil now. Here's the thing. This oil has obviously been into a container that a lot of different trucks and oils have been into, but I still want you guys to see it. It's pretty dark actually. <laughs> I was going to say it's not that bad. I mean, it's, it's fairly dark. You can still, I mean, you can still see it has like a gold tint to it, but I mean, but it is pretty dark. But in those 20,000 miles he had it, or 25,000, I don't know. I don't know if the oil was ever changed or not. I have no way of knowing. Um, I could ask my grandmother, but I would like to, I would like to hope that it was changed at least once, but I really can't guarantee it. But yeah, now like when it thins out a little bit there, you can see the more golden tint to it still on that white bag but i mean it was definitely way overdue but again it's also a 247,000 mile engine i mean I'm, I'm sure it's dirty in there from over the years but that's what she looks like i've already checked my oil level and let the truck run a little bit and everything's good but another thing i would like to do is uh rotate these tires i don't know if it would really help much or not but um it definitely it definitely needs an alignment for sure like without any doubt it needs an alignment done um, but i'm not taking it to get an alignment today however i think i will attempt to swap the front tires to the back and the backs to the front that way i can at least get these super knobby uneven tires off the front temporarily so that it helps the ride a little bit you can see the tread super unevenly wore down and i don't blame the tire or the brand of the tire which is kenda i blame alignment issues or potentially weaker bad front end parts uh because if you look at the rears they're very evenly wore down i mean they're very nicely wearing down for 20 some thousand miles on them uh, the fronts though, I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty rough. I mean, there's some lugs that are like 10% left and some that are 60. So it's definitely, uh, definitely something wrong in the front end of the truck. I don't know if it was addressed at some point and you know, it was addressed after the tires were already so far gone, but maybe it'll still help a little bit with the front end ride. If we can swap the more choppy ones to the back and the nice ones to the front, but I don't know if it'll change much or not, but I'm gonna swap them around and then take it for a drive and find out. Well, the front end has definitely got 
It's definitely got a problem. Let me show you. You guys obviously can't feel it, but the wheel, feel it loose like on the hub. I'm gonna take this guess that um, changing around the tires from the back to the front is not gonna solve the problem. So let me show you here a little closer up if I can with just one hand. It's hard because every time I rock it, I'm shaking the camera. But you can see the wheel. It rocks back and forth on the hub there. Um, which isn't good, but you know, I kind of had my suspicions that it had some bad front end parts because the tires were wore down so horribly. And I have no idea how long they've been driving it like that or how long it's been like that. But uh, my problem is definitely not going to get solved by swapping those to the front. If it's got bad front end parts, it's probably actually just going to ruin the back set and the front set's already shot anyway. So I'm actually probably not going to rotate these right now because it's not going to solve my problem. So we're in the 1500 and right now, it actually doesn't seem to be doing it too bad here, but you'll see it in a little bit. The front end gets a little bit wobbly, and I know that somebody's going to say, you shouldn't be driving it if, you know, it's got wheel bearings that are going bad or bad ball joints or whatever, and I, I agree. I agree, but, but, but I'm not going very far, and um, I wanted to show you guys what exactly it was doing, and I thought that it could have just been, you know, the front tires were so chopped up I thought maybe that like bad alignment or something caused that, but they were so sporadically chopped up too that, um, you know, it makes more sense now that there's bad front end parts. That's why, you know, cause if the front end's not tight and it's got play in it, it's gonna make the tires rotate and wobble around all unevenly, which is just gonna cause the tires to get all choppy like they are. So it makes sense, but you know, watch the wheel like Right now it's not doing it too bad. Sometimes it, it starts to wobble and shake, kind of like right now. It's not real bad, but just a real faint, just a real faint wobble in the wheel. So, looks like the front end is gonna need to be gone through, which I'm probably gonna have done very soon. And the thing is though, like I'd hate to have the front end gone through until I can get new tires on it. And I'd hate to have new tires put on it until I can get the front end gone through. And I should be able to do that here very, very soon. But on another note, you notice, no more low wash light. Just got done doing a, about four hours of work on the woods here real quick. Deer season for Ohio is opening up here in just a couple of days. Actually, when you see this video, it'll be tomorrow is the opener. So comment down below who all is going out. If you guys want to keep in touch with our hunting content in those videos, uh, we're going to be filming the hunts and they're going to be on the Brotherhood Outdoors channel. The link's always in the description below somewhere down there. I uh, posted on my Instagram and I said, hey, I'm going to be doing a Q&A. Drop me some questions. So you guys did. I'm just going to take a few of these to answer that I think are going to be the most desirable questions to get answered that a lot of people may have wanted to ask, but just either A, didn't see the post or it's just a question that I think in a general sense, a lot of people would like answer that I haven't heard the answer before. So let's get into it. So somebody just asked me, why don't you build a personal truck or a truck that's more of a budget? Because we would love to see that. Funny you should mention that. That's what I'm driving right now. So I actually bought this truck for my grandfather in early 2018 and uh, he recently passed away and I got a Jeep for my grandmother and I traded her a Jeep for the truck so that she still had another backup vehicle but it gave me the opportunity to restore this truck and get it back to being in excellent condition which it really was super clean when we bought it for him and the undercarriage of the truck is still pretty stinking clean but there has gotten some rust on the body now because it was you know it was never garage capped it wasn't really washed you know it was just kind of driven and parked you know and so that being said, um, salt has eaten away at a good portion of, you know, the rocker panel on the one side and cap corners on both sides. The bed is a little bit eaten up. You know, I'm gonna try to restore this truck and do a very mild build on it. And when I say a very mild build, I'm talking like wheels, tires, exhaust, make sure it's mechanically sound, like ball joints or tie rod ends or whatever needs up front. Um, you know, just, just basic stuff that it, it 
needs, you know, just so it runs and drives comfortably, good, sound, and, you know, we can use it as a truck to drive anywhere, and we're not going to be concerned about will it make it, is it going to be reliable? Um, the truck itself is reliable, but we just want to make sure that it's everything is working as it should, and that being said, we are going to, like I said, if you saw the previous video with this truck in it, I was talking about how we're going to do some things with the exhaust, the wheels and tires, redo the paint and fix the rust and all that other stuff. So stay tuned for that. But um, to the response to that question, why don't you? Well, I've always just kind of been, I don't know, I've always been more focused on our other goals more than dump a bunch of money into a truck for myself to keep. Um, I've always been more like, ah, if I keep Reagan happy, keep her truck looking nice, do a few things for her here and there, you know, that'll keep her content with her truck built. But for me personally, I don't need to have a, you know, personal truck. But obviously now that I have my grandfather's truck that I got him years ago, I'm super excited to finally have a truck that I'm gonna keep. And whether it is the sickest, coolest build anybody's ever seen, or it's just a simple old Dodge pickup truck, I'm excited to have it. And I would say this is my new dream truck. So somebody just asked me, what are the build vehicles looking like for the next couple of months? In other words, I'm, I'm guessing it means like, what's it looking like in terms of the agenda of things to work on? A, this truck, of course, as I was just mentioning, Nasty Red needs a couple more things done and we're gonna be picking up another truck here soon that I think you guys are gonna really like. I don't know if it's gonna be within the next week or two weeks, but I think you guys are gonna like it. I'm pretty excited about it. And it's a truck that I've had my eye on for a while. Those of you who know, you know. If you don't know, I ain't gonna tell you yet. You're just gonna have to wait. Second gen content, you know, with the gasser and Nasty Red. Somebody asks, what made you start doing giveaways? What got you into it? Well, honestly, guys, when I started doing giveaways, there weren't really many people doing them, especially not in the YouTube scene or the Instagram scene. Now it's a pretty big deal in the truck community. And like the car community, there's been people that have been doing, they've been doing giveaways for, you know, way before I ever was. But I didn't know that I'd ever watched car giveaway pages and I never followed any car channels at all. I know nothing about cars really and I don't really care for cars for the most part. But you know what got me into it was essentially I was doing YouTube. A, I was looking for another way to increase my income so that I could sustain doing YouTube because YouTube revenue is so spotty and it's random. I, I'm like, I need something a little more reliable. I need to create my own clothing brand. I need to create my own products and I've got to have something that I can sell and I have to have a way to get more people to buy the stuff that I'm selling so that I can try to make an actual living out of it versus random YouTube checks that one month is a thousand, the next month is 4,000. Like it's completely unreliable. You can't really like structure a life around that, especially, you know, with a wife and kid and soon kids. I'm not saying we're expecting, it's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying we do intend to have more kids. It's like, you know, it's kind of hard to, you know, set up a lifestyle around very random and sporadic income. So, you know, nothing's guaranteed anyways, like even with the giveaways, I mean, something could go horribly wrong and, you know, now it's unreliable. But, you know, for the most part, it's been pretty consistent and ever since we started, and it's been way more reliable than YouTube revenue, which is very random. And on my second reason for doing it is, when I started doing giveaways, I wanted people to have the opportunity, like if I was gonna give something away, I wanted people to have the opportunity to win something that I was passionate about, that I loved, and that I would love to see somebody else drive. So I've always loved second gens and first gens and third gens, but mostly first and second gens and OBS fours. I love OBS fours. The five nines, you know, the third gens, like what we've given away recently, and the black one we're gonna give away here soon, which if you want to enter to win, that beautiful 2003 59 Cummins plus five thousand dollars cash. The truck's only got eighty four thousand miles on it. It's a beautiful low mileage truck super clean if you guys want to win that go to lmpgear.com place an order today because you can get entered as soon as you place an order you're automatically entered every one dollar is an entry to win right now and uh, that's for all products except for one for mystery boxes if you sign up for the monthly mystery boxes every one dollar is 20 entries but that's the only product that gets guaranteed 20x entries every single time and it gets you 20x entries entered every single giveaway automatically and definitely take advantage of that 
if you're interested in monthly mystery boxes and you want to sign up for that. Otherwise, all other items, every one dollar is one entry. So when a five nine comes, was five grand. Anyway, is what I was saying was I wanted people to have the opportunity to win and own something that I would be excited to win or I would be excited to own because I just really love those vehicles. You know, like I love second gen 12 valves. And you know, now that I've grown on Rosine in terms of liking Rosine, I like second gen 24 valves that are done right. I like five nine third gens, like I like that stuff. And if I love a certain truck and I like it and I think it's reliable and I think it'd be a good truck for somebody and it's a truck that I would drive and I'd love to own, that's what I wanna give away. You know, I get people asking me all the time, why don't you give away six O's? Why don't you give away six fours? I'd love to see a six four. I'd love to see a six O. Because I couldn't give that truck away and have that guy leave with a smile on my face saying, that's gonna be a reliable truck for a long time. Enjoy it, man. I have no idea. I don't know anything about those trucks. I've heard way too much bad about them. I've heard way more good about like 12 valves and 24 valves and 5.9 common rails than I ever have 6.0s or 6.4s. I've heard way more bad horror stories about those trucks than I have pretty much any Cummins diesel that I've I've ever ran into in terms of stories. But, you know, I like to give away things that I'm passionate about, that I can honestly say I'm excited about and that I can honestly say I think is super reliable and is gonna be a great truck for somebody. That's what I like to stick to and that's why I choose to give those away and that's one of the big reasons why I got into doing giveaways as well is because I wanted people to have the opportunity, again, to win and own something I'd be excited to own and win. Somebody asked me, am I going to restore the Alice Chalmers WD-45? Honestly, my plan is to, yes, restore the tractor. It's my grandfather's pride and joy. He loved that tractor and he had another one just like it, except it was a WD-45 with a wide front end. I don't know why he liked Alice Chalmers so much, but he had a couple of them and he just thought they were the coolest thing ever. I think he would have loved to see one of his tractors restored and enter into like the small local fairs where, you know, he's always lived in Ohio. And so I think it'd be really cool to restore his tractor, A, because I'd like to see it restored and overhauled if needed as well and just go through the whole thing and i'd love to be able to enter into the local fair where he lived for so many years i want to say i think he lived in belleville ohio for i want to say 50 plus years i mean he lived in belleville for a long time and they have a small fair there that's called the world's fair it's it's really not like that crazy or elaborate but it's cool like the small town feel like People in that town, that is like the coolest thing ever to them. And so many people in that town gather and join in on that. And so it's really cool because when you go there, you see tons of familiar faces of people that live in the community and some that don't, but most of the people at that fair live around there. And so it's really just like a giant hangout session for everybody in the community to get together, hang out, talk, and it's a good time. And you know, I think, you know, there's a real, real small selection of tractors that are restored that are there usually each year. There's usually like six or seven, like there's not very many. And I think it'd be really cool to have his tractor restored and entered into the uh, small fair there in the town that he lived in for so long because A, he loved antique tractors and he loved looking at them at the fairs. I think if he was just gonna splurge on himself, I think he would love to have seen his tractor, one of his tractors restored. Uh, to be able to do something like that. So I think that's what I'm gonna do for sure. And I think he'd be super happy to see that. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up if you're excited to see more on this truck and the trucks that are coming in soon. Please enter to win our current giveaway for that 2003 59 Cummins plus $5,000 cash. I believe there's hardly two weeks left. I think there's just about two weeks left and then that giveaway is over. So if you haven't gotten in, I would suggest doing that sooner than later because some people wait till the very, very, very last minute and then they're like, oh my gosh, I missed it, I didn't get in, and then somebody wins the truck and it could have been them. And then all this regret, you know, just don't want to deal with that, guys. Trust me, just just put in, just put in something. I mean, like Daniel Reynolds said, that one that white third gen that we just give away, he's like, dude, I've been entering the giveaways for the last three years. And he's like, I didn't win every time, but I won finally. And you, you can't win if you don't enter. So he's like, I just randomly put in a few bucks here, a couple t-shirts here. He's like, I didn't buy much, you know, but I bought a cup for this one and I won a truck. So yeah, I would definitely put in something. And you know, our giveaways, the odds are pretty much 
way better than most people think. And I will catch you guys in the next video.